Boo. Morning. Happy Sunday morning. Okay, let me just get a little bit situated here. So this morning, we're going to stitch rainy Glasgow. Do you know what? It's been raining probably almost all night because there's puddles everywhere, but it's not raining right now, which I'm thankful for. <laughs> Okay, so today we're going to stitch whichever girl that you chose. So I'm doing a really big 8-inch hoop. So I'm going to do three strands. Um, but if you used a smaller hoop, you might even want to do two, depending on how small that you used. I think most people will be okay with three, though. Um, I thought about doing all six only because kind of if you hold it up, like that it seems like it might work um, but she's gonna be pretty much covered in flowers all the way around so I think three might be a little bit better so I'm gonna show you really quickly how to separate the threads because I know a couple people probably have never done this before and that's fine so what you're gonna do um, is take the thread and it's just I'm using the anchor stranded Moulin, just a cotton thread and they come with six strands and you can see like that so there's two ways that you can kind of do it uh, the first way is to separate however many you want so I want three and you separate it like this and I just call it the Y because it makes a Y so you're gonna hold it like this and kind of untwist with your one hand. So this is what we've got. And kind of just let it dangle and untwist. I know not all thread will do it, will do it this smoothly and that's okay. And what you'll get is a little bit like this. Yeah. Now the other way, Helen's just said, have you tried separating them from the middle? I haven't because, um, well, I have, I've only tried once, but the one time I did try, I had a knot on each hand. <laughs> so I decided not to do it that way anymore. But I know some people swear by that, to, to just pull one out of the middle. Uh, the other way you can do it, I'll do it with this other one I have on, on, on the side. It's $85. Oh. You're killing me. So the other way to do it is to... Um, well, this one's only got two, obviously, but you just pull out the one that you want. Just pull one and put your fingers like this for the rest. And you just pull that one. So obviously this is great if you just need one piece of thread. So the rest end up kind of looking like this. And you just straighten them all out again. Yeah. But if you need three, then you need to do it three times and then put the three together. Like that just smooth it out all the way the only thing that I found I don't like with this method is that if you've got three strands or four strands sometimes they kind of stay apart like this see how they're not as twisted whereas if you pull out three at a time they're all twisted into one piece so really it's just up to you what you like to do how you like to separate them there's no right or wrong way so if you find a way that you like Keep on doing it. That's totally fine. Okay, so I've got three strands here. I'm just gonna thread my needle. And the way that I find threading the needle, because we didn't do this yesterday, we've only transferred our image, um, is I like to put the strands between my fingers like this and do this kind of motion. And put the eye right over top of where I know my thread is and push it through like that. So it works with one strand all the way up to six or even 12. I just find that way works best for me. 
I know some people like to lick the end of it, but that can make um, the end and eye of your needle a bit rusty. So just depends what you like. And then for me, I like to do a little knot on the end. Just like that. And then kind of shimmy it all the way to the end. Now, if you've got less strands, like one or two strands, then you might have to do kind of three or four knots on the end because if you've got just one strand, it might pop right through your fabric if you've pulled it hard enough, you know? So just keep that in mind uh, on, on the days that we use less because we will be using two or one strand throughout uh, the month. So there you go. Uh, the other thing I want to say is some people will um, not use a knot at all, meaning that they'll just come up from the back. Oop, that's my soup cans. Come up from the back, leave a bit of a tail, and then go back and uh, tie them all later. That's completely fine as well if that's what you prefer. Um, I also know some people will use a waist knot, meaning that they'll come up kind of to the side of whatever, wherever they're working. So we're gonna do the girl and outline her in black today. So they'll come up way over here with their knot, start stitching, and then when they're all done stitching, they'll cut it off. So there's no knot at all, it's just there. Some people really swear by that, it's really up to you. So with this, we're just gonna do a basic back stitch, black thread, three strands. I'm gonna zoom in for you so you can see the stitches better. This every two minutes skipping the ads is like not for me. I think I need to make a playlist like I said yesterday. So with the back stitch, you're gonna come up from the back, pull your thread through and come right back down. So the first stitch for the back stitch is really the only stitch that you'll go forward to complete a stitch. So most of the time, you'll go forward like this and come back to complete a stitch because it's the back stitch. <laughs> so from now on, every stitch will be going forward to start and then back through the same hole that you just kind of went up through before. Like that. And what you want to look at for this is all of the uh, stitches should be about the same length. So what you don't want to do, is that a little bit better? What you don't want to do is have one that's like really long and then one that's really short and then a really long one and a really short one. You wanna keep them all about the same length. So here's the first one, second one, third one. So you just wanna keep on trucking along. Same stitch length or try your best. Like we're obviously not gonna measure them or anything like that. But just try your best. I will say that with the darker color threads, like any dark color, black, dark gray, dark blue even, um, they kind of all blend together to form a straight line where, well, they are a straight line, but you know what I mean, like a solid line. Whereas if you use a lighter color thread, you're going to see every single stitch. So if you're going to do like a, if you didn't choose black for your girl, maybe you wanted to have um, like a off-white or a light gray or something like that, then be really aware of how your stitches are spaced because you'll be able to see every single stitch. Now, obviously there are solutions to that. If you want to use a stem stitch, if you already know how, then you can do that. Or if you wanna go back and whip your, your back stitch, you can do that too. And we'll be doing both of those stitches um, in the next coming weeks. So you'll have a bunch of stitches in your arsenal. Helen, is that your sister? I just saw that, super late. That's nice. Do you live close to each other? We can do some stitching together. I 
Okay, I'm seriously about to uh, stop watching YouTube. YouTube playlists. So distracting. Pretty close. Oh, that's so nice. Do you see each other often? I'm just being nosy. <laughs> so you're just going to follow the line of the girl all the way around wherever your needle takes you on the path. <laughs> the only thing that I am always a little bit... Um, well, it bothers me. It doesn't bother everyone else, but is people who kind of jump from here to here. So then you can see through the fabric that you get that line like that, yeah? So say that I finished this and then went straight to the nose, you'll have a, a line that goes straight across from here all the way, and you'll be able to see it through your fabric because I've chose white fabric. So if you've chosen a darker color, or maybe something with a pattern, um, it won't matter as much, but with the white, fabric and the dark colored thread, you're, it really doesn't look um, as nice. It's a little bit distracting when you can see the lines like jumping all over the place. So obviously that's just my opinion. Um, if it doesn't bother you and you think that's easier, then of course do it. Because as I always say, there's really no right or wrong way I mean, if you're doing like a, like a stitching exam or something, maybe, but we're not getting tested. I mean, unless you want me to test you at the end. That might be kind of fun though. Like a little, which stitch is this test? But yeah, you're not getting tested, so... <laughs> Do it how you like it. Jesse's like right at my feet and it's not um, like very comfortable standing here because it's like I'm standing at a really weird angle. Do you know what I mean? All up in my grill, she is. Oh, Helen said, V got me into cross stitch, so I thought I'd give her, get her to try embroidery. Oh, that's quite fun. And plus, I think it's always good to like have a friend to stitch with or at least someone that you can be like "Ooh, have a look at this like what do you think or like let's do this pattern together someone said what kind of fabric are you using this is a white Kona cotton I got it at Joanne Fabrics in the States uh, normally I just use a 100% cotton let's see if I have any close This one. Is it this one? Yeah. These look the same. This one. It's dirty though. Sorry. But normally I use just a 100% cotton. You can find it pretty much in any store. It's just 100% cotton. You can find like the curtain lining is always a really good uh, bang for your buck because it's 100% cotton, completely white, and it's normally or really cheap. Where this Kona cotton I think was like $8.99 for a yard, which is really close to a meter. So it's like six pounds for a meter when the um, curtain lining or 100% cotton fabric is like 
two pounds or two pounds 50 for a meter. Hi, George. How are you this morning? So yeah, you're just looking for any fabric with no stretch, no stretch. So someone messaged me the other day and said, um, I can't tell if my fabric is stretchy or not. And I was like, well, when you pull it, does it stretch? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and she thought that I meant that you had to have stretch. You want no stretch. Um, if you have some that has a little bit of stretch or is stretchy, then it's really not that big of a deal. But it's just going to give you a bit of grief when you take it out of the hoop. Because when you take it out of the hoop, we've stretched it to put it in the hoop. And when you unstretch it to get it out of the hoop, obviously you'll relieve the tension. Which means that... Uh, oh, goodness. Which means that it's going to shrink back down. So, no stretch is best but like I said earlier like use anything that you have so if you've got um like an old bed sheet that you don't use anymore use like snip off a corner of that if you've got curtains that aren't you know really really thick then of course use some of that you've got a shower curtain I've seen some shower curtains that are quite nice have a nice like pattern on them you can use some of that pillowcases such as by meg just said pillowcases are really good and most of the bedding like that has um no stretch in it unless you get jersey yeah so on with the show says i used an old bed sheet that's perfect and if you get them from a thrift shop then they're like super cheap and you have so much fabric that you can like keep stitching with Like, there's nothing, like, shameful about being, like, I honestly don't have any money to spend on, like, going to the fabric shop and buying expensive fabric. You don't need to. Go to a charity shop. Find something there. I've even used, like, um, men's dress shirts. which they're not amazing, but they're really great to practice on. Okay, and I had one other question in my inbox this morning when I woke up, and it was, uh, do we have to take the fabric out of the hoop after every day? Um, no, <laughs> that would be very, very, very tiresome to do that every single day. And you'd have to kind of recenter it on your hoop. So, um, yeah, keep it in the hoop every day. And then if you would like to take it out and use it for something else afterwards, like when we're all done stitching, then of course you can. So some people like to like make it into a banner, make your stitching, I mean, into a banner. Some people like to uh, frame it. So they put it in like a, like an actual boxed frame. And that can look really lovely. But for these purposes, really, you can just take the whole circle hoop and hang it straight on your wall or put it on a bookcase when you're done. So don't kind of freak out if you think, oh, it would really look good in a frame, but I haven't got enough fabric to put it in a frame. Because obviously we're doing a circle and most frames are square. So you kind of have to cut off some of the sides if you wanted to put it in a frame or plan for extra fabric on the sides if you wanted to put it in a frame. I've had people stitch on bags. I know um, slow fashion slow oh sarah what is your um username slow studio fashion fashion studios slow fashion studio got it <laughs> i know she has just stitched on bags before and clothing and it's absolutely stunning so 
You can do all kinds of stuff with embroidery after you're done with it. And I'm trying to get to the very end with this. I don't think that I will. Day one, and I'm going to lose thread chicken. Oh, dearie me. Okay, so I think that you guys... Ooh, Stitches by Meg says tote bags are my favorite thing to stitch on at the moment. Ooh, show me some of the things that you stitched on because I don't think I've seen them. Okay, that's enough for me. I'm done. I'm using three. So at the beginning of each video, you'll find what color that I'm using and how many strands. So if you miss it after I'm finished, you can go back and have a look. And that's another thing in the previous stitch alongs that people have always messaged to say, how many strands are you using? Like go back to the beginning of the video. I, I say at the beginning of every video, how many strands? Okay, let's grab another piece. Yeah, no problem. And um, today is the Super Bowl. Does anybody watch the Super Bowl on here? So obviously uh, I'm in England and it starts at 11.30 p.m. <laughs> That's at night. Uh, so we're going to sweep the floor, clean the house, wash everything up. Ooh, someone does. She says, go Chiefs. Is it um, Ciara or Sierra? Ciara? Meow Ciara? Yeah, so I'm making a bunch of food. It's going to be so much fun. I cannot wait. But uh, after this, I have to clean my whole desk off. And I've got a um, football field that I've painted. So I've painted uh, the teams on each end. And then all of the, the field is like different colors. Like the light green and the dark green, like an actual football field. And then I've got all like the lines on it for um, like... 10, 20, 30, if you know what I mean. And then there's the NFL emblem in the middle. I'm so excited. But after this, I've got, um, I've got to do the paid stitch along video and then it's operation clean the house. It's going to be good fun. I've got to put all my embroidery stuff away. <laughs> like everything has to go. So David's out getting the food for it. Do you guys have like Super Bowl parties? Like obviously because I work from home, I can stay up as late as I want and watch it. But um, David, my husband, if you're new, um, he ha he's a teacher. So he has to be, he leaves for work at seven. And he has the kids all day, so we'll be up until probably 3.30 or 4 watching the game, a.m., and then he'll go to work in the morning, whereas I can sleep in if I want. <laughs> I mean, other than, like, the stitch along at 10, that's pretty much all I have, and some orders, but it's so funny, isn't it? <laughs> Ciara says she has a small party. It's fun. We're going to make homemade chicken fingers, meatballs with like whiskey, ketchup, and brown, um, brown sugar. And then it makes a really nice sauce. And then we're having seven layer dip. And then like a vegetable tray. What else? Oh, halloumi. So we're having bacon wrapped halloumi. Oh, I cannot wait. I think I might just like not eat all day just so that I can... Just so that I can like eat a lot tonight. Mine is so big, so like yours will not take this long, I promise. Sierra says this is so satisfying to watch. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same. She says, I'm only excited for the food, honestly. Like, okay, so I make all of the food because I'm the only American in England that comes to my Super Bowl party. <laughs> I'm the only one. So yeah, I make all of the food. 
And I really like, I cannot wait. Okay, so normally for the stitch long videos, if they kind of get longer than 30 minutes, I will, um, I will try and like cut it short only because once you get the technique, you can do it, like you can do it by yourself. Um, but I will finish this one today just so that you can see it all done because I know there's some tricky situations where you might have to um, cut the thread like I've just done, make a new knot and stitch again. So that's totally okay. But then also when it goes on YouTube, um, you can fast forward through some of it if you'd like as well. So yeah, so after this, I need to put the videos from yesterday on YouTube and the prep videos, make a playlist so that you guys can like do the playlist. Oh, the recipe is really easy. So the, have you heard of seven layer dip before, Helen? So it's just, it's like tacos, but not with no meat. So it's refried beans on the bottom. You get like a Pyrex dish out. Come on. I've got a knot, guys. Sorry. So it's just, you get out like a big rectangle tray, like a baking tray almost. But I use the glass one. Or actually, I think I used a ceramic one that we got at Dunelm. But the container doesn't really matter that much. You just need a big one. And you put a can of refried beans on the bottom. And then you put sour cream. And you smooth it all out. Don't mix them. Just put them like a layer. And then you put salsa on top of that. And then you put cheddar cheese on top of that. And then you put lettuce on top of that. And some people put guacamole, but I don't like guacamole. Okay, I think this knot's just going to have to live on the back of my project. <sighs> Schooled you. Yeah, so if you do guacamole, then it goes um, the refried beans, then guacamole, then sour cream, then salsa. And some people also put um, onions, like raw onions that are chopped like really small. But I also don't like raw onions. I would much rather have cooked onions. But this isn't really like a cooked, a cooked thing. So after you layer them all in your dish, you just put it in the fridge. And that's all. Literally, that's it. And then you take tortilla chips when it's ready to serve. Just take tortilla chips and you just scoop them. Scoop them in. So it's kind of like a taco, but not... It is really good, but I have to keep telling the boys to stop scooping, like, only as far down as the salsa and the sour cream. Like, you need to eat the beans as well. You can't just, like, scoop the top layers off because some of the boys, obviously, like, the beans aren't their favorite part. But I make it that way anyways. <laughs> so, joke's on them. Jody's here. Hi, Jody. It's a long live today. Goodness gracious. Yeah, so like the layers will depend on how much of each of the products that you use, but normally I just do. Um... I got another freaking knot. You're joking. You're joking me. Normally I just do, um, like if you go to Aldi. And I'll just do like one can of beans because like we don't like the like a lot of beans anyways. So we'll do just like one can of beans and then um, one pot of sour cream. One of the glass containers of salsa. All of it from Aldi. Except for the beans. I think sometimes they don't have them. So I've had to go to Sainsbury's for that. And then obviously just like ch shredded cheddar cheese. You can get that at Aldi in like a bag. And then what else? Lettuce, just like shredded lettuce on the top. Just come on over, Helen. Just come on over and have some. <laughs> Ooh, 
All right, guys, we're almost finished. So at the very end, I'm going to show you how to do the thread saver method of the back stitch. Now, the thread saver method, I should have showed this ages ago. I'm sorry, I completely forgot. The thread saver method is when you're running out of thread and you need to make it to the end because you don't want to put more thread on your needle and cut it again. So you're going to go up the seam as you start, except instead of going forward again, yeah, you're going to go up through the seam hole and go forward again. Forward, forward, back, and then through the seam hole. And you'll see, I'll flip it over in just a second, you'll see on the back that it doesn't use as much thread as the other, the other way. So if you're kind of running out of thread and you're gonna play thread chicken, then this is the way to make your thread last a little bit longer. Is it technically the right way to do the back stitch? Absolutely not. But does it work if you just wanna get those last few lines? Absolutely. <laughs> It also works if you kind of um, like this line right here. I don't want to have like a diagonal line behind. So it also works if you want to kind of strategically position your thread so that you can go straight across here and have the line be in the same line. So as you can see these ones, it uses a bit of thread because you're always going forward and back and forward and back and forward and back. But with this one, you're actually using almost half of the thread. So it just depends on which one that you prefer. Sometimes I think when you're doing the actual back stitch, you'll get a little bit nicer of a line. But again, it's really up to you. There's no right or wrong way. All right, so I'm almost finished. After this, I'll do the paid stitch along video and we're going to be using some colors. Can't wait. Okay, so another way. So I've just ended in the middle here. Can you see where I'm pulling it? Just right here. So I really don't wanna put it over like that. It's just a little bit that you can see but if you don't wanna put it over like that, you can always on the back, slide your needle up through some other stitches. So what I can do is slide my needle up like this. And that way when I go down, it will also follow the same line that I've already stitched and it will make it so that you cannot see the thread like that. Yeah. So sometimes stitching can be, you need to be a little bit strategic with how, how you make your stitches and where the thread goes. Because I think it's just sometimes it's really, really distracting. If you know for sure that you're not going to stitch over that piece. So like all of this is going to stay the color of the fabric. And because of that, you need to be a little bit careful with where you put your stitches. And obviously, if you've already done it and you've just gone all willy-nilly, like, just stitch, 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 that's totally fine. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just, for some of you, it might be your very first ever embroidery. So don't worry about it. You know, for next time. So the nose, and then I'm done. And really, you don't even have to do the nose if you don't want to. I just thought that it looked nice with a little nose on there. Okie dokes. So that's it for me for today. Tomorrow, we're going to start drawing our shapes on. So I would recommend getting a Frixion pen. Oh, oh no, oh no. There we go. Yeah, and I'll show them one more time just in case because if you're here in England, they sell them at Sainsbury's, so rush on out and grab one because I'm telling you, it will make your life so much easier. Um, they erase with 
the blow dryer. Actually, I was just thinking, I think I have some that I got from Sainsbury's. You know exactly what kind to look for. They are straight up just the Frixion, Frixion brand. And I think you can get black, black, blue, and red. Like they come in a pack, like there's a, bl a blue, a red, and a black all in one. Or you can get three blacks. Um, and they look like this. They've got the little eraser on the back. Um, I will say that sometimes, yeah, you can get refills for them. So sometimes um, they, the lines will come back. So if you're drawing and drawing and drawing like 15 times, um, you, sometimes you can see like a phantom line on there. But I found if you put a little bit of water on it and just put it on the radiator and let it dry, like naturally, don't like blow dry it or anything. Um, then those little phantom lines will go away. So I will talk more about that in the morning when we actually start drawing our things because I have a feeling that some of you might um, think I did a bad job and I want to I wanna do again, which is totally fine. Um, so I'll give you a nice little trick for that tomorrow. Alrighty, so I'm off. I hope that you loved watching me stitch that up. Sorry it took literally 40 minutes, probably because I was talking so much. Um, but I hope you have a great Sunday, happy Super Bowl, and I will see you tomorrow. All right. Bye.